Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today, I'm Sergei Ganesian. Ukrainian cargo jet Maria, which is the largest plane in the world, made its first commercial flight and landed in Australia. Many believe that Maria is a beacon of rejuvenation of Ukraine's aircraft industry. So in the next 10 minutes we're going to talk about that with our guest, Andrei Huk, who is a Ukrainian aviation law expert. Mr. Huk, thank you very much for joining us. Hello again. So Maria, which, is, which translates uh, as dream, is the biggest plane in the world. Besides that, what's so special about this uh, particular aircraft? Oh, there is a lot of special about this aircraft. She is one of he, this aircraft is one of the biggest uh, uh, record maker uh, ever in aviation industry. It's even called something like King of the Skies. Uh, why so? For example, this uh, the last flight that we now uh, seen is uh, to Australia. Uh, some cargo uh, cannot be delivered there, uh, for example, by the sea, due to some circumstances. And uh, the only the only uh, aircraft that is able to uh, carry such large uh, cargo is only Maria. And uh, it is even so much special that it is even no need to build any other. Uh, second or third uh, such a, a big plane because uh, actually Maria covers uh, all worldwide need for, for such cargo uh, services. And you mentioned records, what, what records are those? Oh, it is the biggest plane in the world, uh, it is a plane that carried the biggest uh, cargo in the world, it is uh, a plane that uh, can carry a long distance uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, it needs uh, something like seven people uh, of uh, crew on board. Yes, yes, on board because uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, uh, this flight became something like uh, old times when uh, first uh, pilots uh, were traveling through the world. Uh, all world uh, uh, tried to uh, to see it and uh, to to look up. Uh, and now uh, everywhere where Maria lands, it's something like a big event. Yes, and in Australia there are several thousand people. It's not only Australia, it's only in Prague, in uh, Kuala Lumpur, in India, so everywhere this uh, plane is met something like a big event. Uh, all long distance and huge cargo that has some special uh, requirements uh, is carried by Maria uh, from time to time. So, uh, but now uh, as Antonov uh, tries to uh, conquer new markets, it became something like a huge PR event, a uh, marketing event, and it is uh, very good. It shows that Antonov tries to use uh, everything it, uh, it has uh, just to promote uh, this company and to promote new projects. That Ukraine and Antonov uh, in particular is able uh, to build planes and is able to um, uh, maintain them and to deliver uh, the highest level of services and production. And it's actually interesting that this plane made its flight uh, in light of a recent uh, defense exposition in India where Ukraine yeah. signed a number of memorandums with India to create uh, fly, uh, airplanes for this country. But it's not a concrete uh, contract yet. But however, it's seen as a major victory for Ukraine because it could replace Russia. So is it, is yes, it possible? Yes, it's not a hard con contract yet, but that's why we need all this uh, marketing, uh, uh, something like movements uh, and uh, events. And uh, now Antonov facing um, uh, perspective of a few contracts in Saudi Arabia, in uh, India. Now uh, it was announced uh, yesterday uh, that there are some perspectives in Turkey. So uh, that's why, of course, uh, what Antonov has uh, most uh, uh, known in the world, it's Antonov Mlia. That's why they are using it and it is very right and very good. But do you think that, uh, well, it's a logical question, a uh, number of, co of contracts with many countries, could Antonov really cover the needs and create the amount of uh, planes needed for uh, this? That's why, of course, uh, one of the strongest, strongest sides of Antonov is uh, its uh, constructors bureau and it is uh, ability to construct uh, um, uh, any planes. Uh, and, but uh, if we talk about a building a plane or a series of planes, for example, 100, it's uh, not possible for Antonov. So uh, that's why if we talk about India uh, possible contract or Saudi Arabia, we are not talking that Antonov will be uh, producing something like uh, 100 and more planes. Um, we are talking about some joint venture and building a plane in Saudi Arabia and in India that will be uh, building and producing uh, all these new planes. 
and Antonov will uh, deliver all intellectual property and know-how and their people to create uh, these planes. And of course, uh, this is one of the uh, goods that Antonov can sell now. And that's why, but uh, it is not simply delivering intellectual property and that's all. Antonov will be involved in all the pr process uh, to the end. So it will help to uh, make Antonov more stronger on the market. It will help to uh, build new um, uh, plants. And that's why it is very, very perspective for, for Ukraine. It's very perspective, but isn't it enough to kickstart this manufacture of Antonov? You see, uh, it's hard to say uh, what will be enough. Now Antonov uh, faced a problem that it needs to prove that they are able to build a plane and they are able to uh, make it from the beginning to the end. Uh, actually, what we now see with this Antonov, uh, Maria, and what we see with uh, this new plane that is uh, traveling all over the world, uh, 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 and they build it, uh, this new plane, and they can show it. So it, it, it is uh, one of the first and main uh, tasks is to show that we are able to do it. But again, this plane was constructed uh, in uh, 1988 by the Soviet Union, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not, not, not like Soviet Union. There are a lot of people, a lot of constructors and engineers yeah, that know, are still a heritage of all this uh, company. Still, yeah, it was created long ago and now we have these major problems, economical, and uh, we have it's a war. Not, so it's not so long ago. There are lots of plane, uh, planes all over the world that, that are now used uh, and they are more old if we talk about years. Um, all uh, new and even young engineers are trained of, uh, by elder ones. That's why and all these premises are left the same. So uh, they have own uh, airport in Hostomel, they have a uh, huge intellectual school in uh, Ukrainian University, Soviet University, KPI and so on. So, uh, and they built a new plane uh, from the start to the end. So uh, this is a ability. We are talking about not ability to build a new plane or construct it. It is undisputed. Antonov can. Uh, what we are talking about is uh, is Antonov able to build 100 planes a year? No, it is not possible. That's why we have contracts with, with India and Saudi Arabia that will be joint venture and new planes will be built. Did the breakup with Russia uh, impact Antonov in any way, really? Again, to my mind, uh, all the connections with Russia, uh, when we are speaking about Antonov, they are something like also a Soviet heritage, but bad one. Yes, why bad? Because even, even metal sometimes were delivered from Russia. So now we, have, we see that Antonov managed to, um, um, to break all these chains, let, let's and, say and like and this. And replace, yeah, important. And replace, yes. That's why it also shows that Antonov is able to uh, build a new plane even without Russia. So uh, they found other uh, suppliers and uh, now they can propose to possible clients much more options uh, how to build the planes, how to find the spare parts, uh, how to provide maintenance services and so on. So. Uh, I see uh, uh, more good in, in this um, uh, breaking relationships with Russia than bad. Why would these countries choose Antonov over Russia? So what makes Antonov so special when compared to Russia and other, maybe other manufacturers? Actually, at the moment, if to take uh, something like geopolitics, uh, Russia is facing a problem that they even are not able to build their own planes because uh, due to international sanctions and so on and so forth, they have lots of problems. So uh, if in, in the manner of uh, such a contract, when uh, um, uh, Air Force of India, for example, uh, state enterprises need uh, 100 and more planes, it is uh, not um, good to have a contract with uh, Russian entity due to this uncertainty. That's why uh, here Antonov looks um, um, more reliable. Uh, more reliable, yes. Antonov looks more negotiable because, uh, because uh, again, uh, Antonov understands that that it has few minuses. It's not ability to build a huge number of planes. It is not ability to build a new plane plant uh, to help uh, to solve this issue. That's why uh, Antonov needs uh, money and needs investments and uh, India and Saudi Arabia can uh, give it. And uh, uh, that's why Antonov uh, won't argue uh, with prices and so on and so forth. So uh, that's why Antonov looks very good. Uh, but uh, 
um, the, it is too early to talk about uh, uh, that we will have these contracts. Yeah. But again, what we can say clearly is that Antonov uh, chose the right way. What about our domestic needs? Uh, Antonov is a part of uh, the state-owned uh, arm manufacturer, right? Abro yes, Abro 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 So could we potentially see some maybe fighter jets made by Antonov? Because again, this uh, latest uh, plane uh, that was um, uh, uh, constructed by Antonov Bureau, it is a plane that is able to uh, uh, land on unprepared uh, surfaces. So it is not something like civil aviation plane. Uh, it is a cargo plane, it is a Air Force plane, and maybe in the third way it is a civil aviation pla uh, plane. That's why uh, actually it is uh, something like this uh, market that Antonov tries to took now. Um, and Air Force uh, uh, plane, it is one of, one of these. But um, there is no huge internal uh, market in Ukraine. So I, I don't see that uh, there is some perspective uh, in Ukraine. So that's why we see India, Saudi Arabia, Turkey and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe Brazil, I don't know, maybe China. Uh, but uh, internally, it's not huge needs in, 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 in planes in Ukraine. Really? Because we lost, we, I think our Air Force is actually in a poor condition and we could use some in... Okay, but potentially it's, it's maybe two, it's maybe three, but uh, if we compare with India, we are talking about 100 and, and, and so on. So uh, that's why it is, of course, uh, it can be some contract with uh, Ukrainian army and so on, but it, it, it won't be huge uh, in comparison with uh, what we are talking about in India and Saudi Arabia. I can only hope that these contracts will be signed and Antonable seats uh, prosper. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hook, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You've been watching Ukraine Today. Uh, I've been joined by Andrei Huk, a Ukrainian aviation law expert. Many thanks for watching us and I'll see you next time.